something. And we're confident, according to 1 John 5, 14, 15, if we ask in confidence, mm -hmm. then we have the petitions that we desire, is what the Word says. That's right. Now, how I many know it has to be based on the Word? Amen. We can't ask for something stupid, yeah. like it's happening in the body of Christ a lot of time. Right. Nuts praying for somebody else's husband or somebody else's wife. God's not honoring anything like God that. Not. I mean, that's stupid. Yes, it is. You you pray according to the word. Yes. You ask according to the word. You watch it on his word. Amen. Amen. Is that good? Yes. You like that? I like it. Very good. Mm-mm. -mm. Broken folks. Proverbs 13, 20. Look at this. This is the, number three. Associate with the right people. Be with people who walk by faith. Not by doubt. I didn't even hear an amen out of it. Amen. Let's read it. Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with wise men will be wise. But he who but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Who are you hanging with? Has a lot to do with what's happening in your life. Because I'm telling you, if you hang with people that's not of like Christian's faith, they may be good Christians that love God, but they're not like Christian's faith. They will nibble away at your faith. Yes. Uh, there's no doubt, no belief. Well, now, are you sure God really told you? <laughs> are you really sure God put you to heal? You know, not everybody gets healed. No, it's not for everybody. So what are they doing? See. And I mean, they're not doing it intentionally to be mean or anything. I'm not saying it. But that's what they've been taught. That's what they've been trained. That's what they believe. So that's what comes out of them. Right. You can hang out with somebody for about 30, 45 minutes. You find out what's in them real quick. Oh, yeah. Listen to what's coming out of their mouth. Mm -hmm. How they talk. How they talk. How they talk. If they're saying, that makes me sick. Oh, that's killing me. I mean, oh, well, love you. Bless you. Hallelujah. You shouldn't talk that way in the name of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? I mean, really. I mean, I don't want to hear that kind of stuff. That's right. I'm not into killing and stealing and destroying. That's Satan's job. That's right. That's right. I'm into having people come into a bountiful Zoe life. That's right. That's what I'm about. That's what my life, that's the people I want around me. Amen. Yeah, I mean, there's people that are babes in Christ. Sure, I'm going to love them. I'm going to do everything I can to be a blessed them. I'll hang with them as long as they want to hang. Because I'm trying to help them, instruct them, train them, teach them. I'm talking about mature people that's been in the body of Christ for years. And they're trying to tell me, well, you know, God don't always heal anymore. So you better go talk to somebody else. You talk to the wrong person. That's right. Amen. Well, you know, it's not God's will for everyone to prosper. <laughs> really? I mean, really? That, yeah, let's rip out, what, 3 John 2? Let's just tear that one out. That, yeah. you know, that's no good. <laughs> Philippians 4, 19. Yep, that's gone. Yes, Throw that one out. I mean, think about it. Think about what I'm saying to you. People will speak things in your life that's not of God. That's Amen. right. Don't receive it. Amen. Amen. You got to know the word. You're right. If you don't renew your mind to the word, I'm telling you, you will swallow any kind of garbage and trash that's coming down the river. Amen. Amen. So true. Think about it. Think with me just a minute. I mean, seriously. Who could, in their right mind, it's born again? I'm talking about even spirit filled people now. I'm talking about people that pray in tongues. Tell you sometimes, well, you know, sometimes God does heal people and sometimes He doesn't. Hey, man, that isn't God. No, it's not. You tell me God's schizophrenic? <laughs> you tell me that, you know, well, I like Him better, so I'm going to heal Him. Well, no, I don't like you, so you, know, you just keep your pain. That isn't in the Word. Mm -hmm. That does not line up. That's not right. It do not work. Mm -hmm. What I find in Matthew, the 8th chapter, when the leper came to Jesus, he said, Lord, if you be willing, you can heal me. Jesus said, I'm willing. Be thou healed. Be thou cleansed. Right. If he said that to that leper, God's no respecter of persons. That's right. But he is a respecter of faith. Let me yes, just say that. Yes. He's no respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of faith. That's right. If he healed that leper, he's going to heal me. That's right. It's just will be healed. Amen. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I'm the type of person, man, if I find something in the Word and I lay hold of it, I get very upset, man, if I get attacked in that area. That's right. I come against Satan with everything. I got, man, I got all the guns out. I'm telling you, when he comes to me, uh -uh, I ain't putting up with it. I don't care what it is. He got sick disease. If he comes against, tries to come against my family, I get very furious. Not at God. Say it. Right. I'm going to put up with it. But we have a privilege. We have a right. We have a covenant. And I'll be doggone if I'm going to live under these privileges in this covenant. We don't have to. That's right. 
So we don't have to. We don't have to. So we're not going to. We're not going to. From this day forward. From this day forward. We're going to walk by faith. We're going to walk by faith. Not by sight. Not by sight. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. There's no way. But if we accept, Jeanette, the trash that's out there and the religious teachings that's out there, I mean, you ain't going to have no power and authority. You're not going to operate in the things God wants you to operate in. Because you're going to believe the religious lie. Amen. Satan, why don't you believe that joke? Oh, I don't know if you've seen Keith Moore recently. Boy, he's been doing some good teaching. He, he, I, I've seen this a little bit of this afternoon. I get to really watch it. But he was talking about how in John, I think it's the 11th chapter, how that they've taken it out of context so many people. You know, when Lazarus died, you know, Jesus, when they come to Jesus, said, no, we need to go to the Lazarus because he's not, you know, he's not good shape where Jesus waited a couple more days to have died. People said, well, yeah, that happened for the glory of God. No. The resurrection was because of the glory of God. It wasn't him dying and getting right. bring glory to God. If you go, when you see Jesus got to the house and disciples, everybody's distraught, man. They're all crying, they're all grieving, they're all upset because their brothers did. Their friends did. There was no glory in that. I mean, they were hurt. And you know, well, which was it? Martha went up to him or Mary? One of them said, you know, Jesus, if you had been here, uh, Lazarus wouldn't die. What did Jesus say? Didn't I tell you, Martha, or Mary, or which one it was? That you'd see the glory of God if you believe? Now, what you get at the scene is just say, think about it, just say, Jesus already knows what he's going to do. He already knows he's going to raise, raise him from the dead. He already sees him alive. He didn't yeah. see him dead. He goes over there with all these people. He says, take the stone away. <laughs> think about it. What did, what did they say? What did Martha say? She said, no, Lord, he's been dead four days. He's thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I imagine he would. He said, take the stone away. What did he say? Lazarus? Come forward. What happened? Think about it. What happened? He was wrapped in blood grave clothes. Right. So he couldn't get up and walk out there. He had to hop out. I mean, that's way he come out, man, because he's wrapped up in blood grave clothes. He comes hopping out of there, man. <laughs> I mean, do you think those people had an explosion of faith that day? Yeah, yes. When they saw that happen, you know they did, man. Yes. Their, their faith was ignited like a forest fire. Mm -hmm. I can assure you, man, they exploded. Mm -hmm. Think about that for a second. Here you are, standing in the presence of the Son of God, which we should be every day. Yes. He's one that's do the works that He did. And the greater works is right. Mm -hmm. All we got to do is tap into the Spirit. Right. It's not you, it's not me doing it. It's, it's the right. Holy Spirit doing it through us. Mm -hmm. We just got to be bold enough to stand up and say, take away that stone. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But have you know, I'll tell you something. I've been in these situations many times. I've been in hospitals where people have died. I've been in all kinds of situations over the last, what, 28 years of ministry? So I've seen a lot of things happen over the last 28 years. You want to talk about pressure? That's where your faith's tested. Mm -hmm. yeah. When there's a death situation, that's when your faith, if you're not strong in faith, I'm telling you, in those kind of situations, your faith will melt like a snowball in a hot off the sun, man, unless you're ready, unless you understand, unless you're hearing from the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not going to go into a funeral home and drag somebody out of the casket like <laughs> Smith Wigglesworth did unless I know it's God speaking to me to do it. Right. Yeah. Now, if I hear the Spirit of God, he said, go and drag him out. Well, you know, they'll probably grab me and take him to jail. <laughs> but I'll be trying to drag him out. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just, I, I mean, really, I'm being real with you. Smith Lewisworth grabbed a guy, threw him up against the wall, and said, live in the name of Jesus. He just slid down. He uh -huh. grabbed him up, live, and he slid down again, like third or fourth time. And he finally said, you know, live, and they, the guy come alive. They, they come walking out together. Now, don't you know the family tripped out that day? Yes, I do. <laughs> don't you know there's an explosion of faith that day? Yes. Uh -huh. We have seen strange things. <laughs> no. <laughs> I mean, think about it. That's an awesome thing. You see something like that, you've got that kind of faith inside of you. So do I, because the Holy Spirit's inside of you. Amen. But if you don't cultivate that, if you don't exercise that, if you don't work on that, see, that wasn't the first time Smith Wigglesworth ever did something like that. Right. You hear what I'm saying? Faith is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the bigger it gets. Right. But it's also like a muscle. 
If you just let it lie dormant, it'll wither up. Wow. And become yeah. weak. That's right. To where you can't even lift your arm. That's right. I, I, I really believe everyone should operate in their faith every day. I believe you should be believing something every day. Yeah. You should be calling and speaking to something every day. Mm -hmm. Releasing your yes. faith for something every day. That's right. What? I don't know. Maybe one of your family members is not born again. I don't know. Maybe you walk around in Walmart and there's thousands of people in there that don't know Jesus. Just release your faith, Father. I ask you today, and I, think, I do it a lot of times. I'm just sitting in the parking lot. Sometimes I go into my wife or something. I just because I don't want to go in. I just say, God, I ask you today, pour your spirit upon every person in this place. I ask you to send angels, ministers, and witnesses across their paths, people they'll receive the gospel from, and I ask you to remove the scales and blinders from their eyes and their minds so they can see and know you, Jesus, and say their Lord. And I pray for people all the time because prayer will change people's lives. If we can just get a Folks, if we can understand, we are operating on such a higher level and a higher dimension than the natural people in the world. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit's here. He's inside of us. He's just waiting for us. He's wanting us to give Him something to do. Mm -hmm. But, again, what's happening? Most people think about, oh, dear God, it's Monday. I've got to go to work. I've got five more days. <sighs> just got to get through this week. I know the boss is going to bother me again. You know, you don't like me, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, and, and you're living a natural life, looking at natural things, and wondering why things aren't changing. I said this last week, and I'll say it again. 5% of people in this country that are business owners, investors, entrepreneurs, Controls 90% of the wealth of this country. 5%. Holy Spirit told me a few years ago, he got on me, he said, Son, he said, my ministry's been great teaching people to tithe and give offers. He said, That's right, they should. He said, They've done a lousy job teaching my people how to be successful. I know that is God's way for us not to be successful. How I many you know we should be believing for more than a job? Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's quiet in here. It's good. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Having a wish to just be blue. Oh, I just can't wait to get 65. I get my social security check. Mm -hmm. Well, Ow. got bad news. It may not be there when you get there. But anyway, why, why, listen to me. That's not the case, man. And don't get me wrong. Everybody is paid in. They should get it. They should get those things. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying my faith is not in the United States Hello. government. Hello. My faith is in El Shaddai. Yeah. Amen. The all sufficient one. Yes. My faith is in El Elyon. The most high God. Man, there was a guy the other day on, I don't remember what program I was watching, but he was talking about, I don't even remember, I think it was a Rick Joyner or somebody who was watching the Supernatural or something. I watched different things here and there. I had a little chance. He was talking about this rabbi friend of mine. This is born again spirit field. He was praying and believing God. Now get this. This is cool stuff, man. You know, his Bible is money. His Bible. Yeah. Yeah. He don't know how they got there. I mean, you know where he goes to God. But I mean, you know, it's Bible. Supernatural, there's money in his Bible. Yeah. Well, I better check mine out. You know? <laughs> no. Praise the Lord. How cool. Think about that. Yeah. Wouldn't that be sweet? You open up your Bible in the morning, you know, there's, yeah, there's $10 bills. Hallelujah. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where it came from. I know where it came from. Thank you, Jesus. So I don't really believe that. Well, you won't ever have to have it happen in your life. Don't you don't have to worry about it. You know, it's like I heard somebody told Brother Hagin one time. Somebody told Brother Hagin one day, he said, well, I don't believe in that either. He said, that's all right. You won't ever have to be well with it. You don't worry about it. It's going to happen. I mean, you know. I mean, that's true. You either believe, receive, you doubt, do that. Make your choice. I'm going to believe God. I'm going to believe the Word. It may not look like it. I may not feel like it. But it's mine. I'm going to have it. It's mine. I won't settle for anything else. Amen. I'm telling you, if I, God forbid, if a person is leaving this life and they're sick, man, you need to be leaving when you